This is Speak Up. Speak Up on Spin. Intimate, Intimate image abuse on Spin. If people don't know your story, you were so brave to come out last year before Coco's Law passed, which now makes the sharing or threat to share intimate images or videos that consent illegal. Before that passed here in Ireland, you came out and you told your story. So for anyone who doesn't know what happened to you, tell us what happened. Yeah, um, so uh, what happened to me happened when I was 17. I was drinking, I had, I had a lot to drink. Um, which it doesn't matter at all anyway in, in these situations. You know, the gist of it is that I ended up having sex with someone in public on the way home. Um, that was then recorded. Um, I was only 17. I, I, everyone was talking about it. I had so many messages about it. I hadn't seen um, the video itself. I didn't really want to see the video oh, yeah. itself. Um, I was kind of... I, I kind of froze, like I didn't really, I was kind of in a state of shock, like I remember going into school that Monday and the study room, which the, the big room that we all like went in our free periods, um, it was just silent when I walked in, like it was just such a horrible feeling. Yeah. Um, it was just completely silent. Um, when I went and sat down, like the girl behind me was like sniggering and whispering. Um, no one stopped to ask you, were you okay? No one except for, you know, my close yeah. friends. Yeah. Um, but no one it, it was all it's just that attitude like like that i was a slut and that like you know it was my fault and everything like that um some of my friends stopped talking to me but then like for me that was kind of like i had my close friends with me yeah. do you know like and they were they like my friends throughout the whole period were such a rock to me um, it's so scary hearing this because i had the exact same situation as in people i thought that were my friends it was silence yeah. You'd walk into your room and you'd think someone's gonna ask me if I'm okay, and no one cared. It was more like salacious gossip, yeah. And it was funny rather than someone stopping and thinking, "Is that girl okay?" And instead of seeing you as a victim, kind of seeing you as like a piece of meat. Mm -hmm. Just this person that's in the video, never stopping for a second because obviously I had a video made of me without my consent as well. So like similar situation. It wasn't in public; it was in private. But equally, like the shock of finding out and like what you were saying, not knowing how to react. And I think what we both have in common as well is the fear of judgment. Yeah. Like, instead of us thinking everyone's going to know that this was out my consent and people are going to look after me, we were scared that we were going to be slut shamed, that people were going to think we were asking for it. And I think victim blaming is such a huge part of the problem because it's very hard for women to come forward and report this as a crime because it is illegal now if they feel like they're to blame. Me and my best friends would say, like everyone's saying how disgusting I am and how disgusting it is that I would do something like that, but no one was questioning him. how disgusting it was of the people that did it, mm -hmm. not even him, but the people that did it. Um, and then like the boy in the situation got nothing. Like nothing he didn't happened. get, he didn't get even half as much, um, so it's the judgment and the shaming yeah. that I got, yeah. um, you know, like, boys on his rugby team would I call him a legend and everything and people would send me photos with him like send oh, me photos with, with yeah no one wants to be the one that speaks out first yeah like, if something and ha it's like happening. the most important thing that needs yeah. to happen though it really is like you said in that situation if someone had been there and just stopped it yeah taking the phone off that girl or you know stopped him or stopped the situation but instead everyone just yeah. kind of egged them on my relationship with my parents my family just completely broke down I didn't think I would get through it to be yeah. honest like That's sure what I say as well, people always ask, like, how? I have no answer. Yeah. I really don't know. And it terrifies me to think of someone, like you're saying, in like a younger age, like 16 now with TikTok and like loads of social media platforms, like, how can they deal with this? It's miraculous that both of us are actually still here. Like, that's yeah. the truth. And I think people need to understand the impact something like this can have. Because, like I said, it's just a video. It's something funny. It's guys think it's hilarious girls think it's it's hilarious but they don't realize the effect that it's having like what i suppose what can people do if something like that is happening if they get a video like what would your advice be at this point based on your own experience i think for people that are supposed witnessing it from like the sidelines the biggest one of the biggest things would be bystander intervention so like yeah. don't just stand there and let it happen like do something say something make sure the people that it's happening to your okay like you know to anyone that is that is going to do it to someone or like is thinking about it or has done it just I think to think of the consequences of doing yeah. it you really don't know like just from one click of a button like just that one click of a button 
almost destroyed my entire relationship with my family.